All right, so we are going to do a video on IPFS, and I'm going to teach you how to very, very simply get your IPFS node fired up and to actually get some files on IPFS. So what is IPFS? IPFS is the Interplanetary File System. This is a decentralized, basically a content delivery network. It's shaping up to be the new internet. And what, is it, what does it mean? What's it going to offer to you? It is basically free, uncensorable, immutable, global file storage. You can store all kinds of files. You could store uh, HTML files. You could store JavaScript files. You could store media files. That's what we're going to do today. We're actually going to put up a, a MP4 video. But what we are starting to use it for, I'm actually using it to deliver my audio book and also the digital copy of my book, Self Ownership. Uh, shameless plug, vinarmani.com slash self-ownership. You can go and buy it and actually experience purchasing something with cryptocurrency and having it delivered with IPFS, fully decentralized. That has been an awesome project. Uh, so, but besides that, instantly, one of the things that we're going to use it for is we're actually going to use it to start storing the uh, MP3 and or M4A files for our podcast. For all those people who are paying for podcast hosting like Libsyn or whatever, this actually gives you an opportunity to have free, uncensorable, fast, globally delivered content MP3s. You can store your MP3s up there. It's free. And it's super fast. So we're going to take this from and completely, so I'm, I'm doing it on the broadcaster computer here, which did not have IPFS installed, completely uh, clean version of IPFS. We're going to go all the way through this, and it literally is, takes under 10 minutes for you to be up and going. And I did this kind of slow. So let's go ahead and let's take a look at this. So you're going to want to go to, I'll put all the links in the description, ipfs.io slash docs slash install. This is going to install Go IPFS, which is the file that you will need. So you're going to go. It's going to tell you your, it's going to show you automatically. This is a Windows machine. You just download, click on download. It's going to give you a zip file. You're going to take the contents of that zip file out. This example will show you in Windows, but it's almost the same in Mac. For people who are using Linux, if you're using the GUI, it's almost the same on that as well. So you're going to just put that in a folder of your choice. There's going to be an executable file in there. That is a uh, totally safe executable file. So you should be getting that from disk.ipfs.io, go IPFS. So what you're going to want to do is put it into, you see I've got it there in just documents IPFS. You are going to want to go here to this getting started. If you want to see what we're doing, or you could just follow along, but this is where all the instructions are that I'm about to lead you down. Very, very easy, very, very easy. So on Windows, if you don't know how to pull up a command prompt, we're gonna go over that right now. Let's forward this a little bit. We're gonna do this ipfs.init. So what you do is you go down here you just open up your start menu, you type in CMD, and that will give you a command prompt, which is what you see over there on the left. Then you're just gonna drag your file right in there and it's gonna, it's gonna fully figure that out. You don't even need to know how to use the command prompt and then just type in INIT in it. This is gonna initialize your first instance of IPFS if it says that to get started IPFS cat if you have this something similar there then that means you are good to go and you can double check just by doing this highlight it right click on it that's going to copy it for you drag your IPFS back in put a little space and then right click to paste if you're on Windows then click enter if you see the little IPFS logo pop up you have done it. Again, you can go there and see the documentation following along. So from here, you are good to go with an initialized copy of IPFS ready. Now you're gonna start the daemon. You're gonna type in D-A-M-O-N after dragging it in. 
it will initialize the daemon or demon some people say it if it says daemon is ready it may ask you to allow access do that with both the private and public networks if it says daemon is ready, you are good to go. Now IPFS comes with a GUI, a graphic user interface. Again, if you go to that getting started page and you scroll down, you can just click right on that. I opened it in a new tab. This is localhost colon 5001 slash web UI. You can also type that into a browser. Once you have the daemon running, so now it's running, these are it's starting to connect to the various peers around the world this is how ipfs works it's a mesh network if you go to files you can see what files it starts out with two files one is basically an empty file if you click on dag that's the directory shows you what's in the directory this has some information about ipfs it's got the readme it's got some about pages that'll always be there for you to check out so now what we're going to do is we are going to go ahead and we are going to add a file. So let's do that. We're going to go and make another CMD, type CMD. You get a command prompt, second command prompt. And we're going to just drag that, take that command prompt and we're going to drag it over on top of the command prompt uh, window where the daemon was. You see that? Just leave that daemon window running. We're going to do the same thing here. We're going to drag IPFS over. Now we're going to find a file. I don't have any music files here. Uh, so let's go ahead and I'll just use something that I used from last week's show. I have this Tucker Carlson video that we used. What I suggest here you can throw the file in, but it won't have the extension on it. What I suggest is to actually use the entire directory. So what you're going to do is you're going to do add dash R. That means recursive to add everything in the directory and then just drag the directory in and hit enter. You're going to see it start to add all of these in there. So now this has been added onto your node. So when you started running that daemon, you became a node along with all those other little blue things that you saw the, in the connections. You became a, a peer on this network. And how this works is as the file travels through the network, it gets peered on all of these different machines. So even if you, if you stop running your daemon, it will still exist or if your daemon gets shut down or if any given one. So if you go to DAG on this newly created file, you see this Tucker Carlson MP4, we're going to click on that. Then in that, in that little box up there, this is giving me basically the location. So you see it slash IPFS slash this hash and then I'm just going to copy and paste it. What you're going to type in is IPFS.io this is the gateway for you to be able to access it. And then you're just going to paste that in. I put one too many slashes. So it'd be ipfs.io slash ipfs slash the hash and then the, uh, the file name. And from there, just let it load. Since it's the first time loading, it's going to be a little slow because it's pulling from your machine. But bam, there it is already. Now this is a big HD MP4. But as you can see, it's there. The more times it's played, the more times it's downloaded, the faster it gets because it's peered in more places. This is, a, this is how a, CD, a major CDN like Akamai works as well. And you can see right here the video playing. It doesn't, I don't have the sound activated, but you can see it going right there in the player. It's playing that MP4. You can, you can download that MP4. You could load it inside of a player. You could put it in an RSS feed for a podcast. I'm starting it and stopping it. And you could see it's pretty much getting it in real time for that, uh, that HD. So you could store anything from movies, MP3s. Like I said, you could store a whole website. That is it. Literally five minutes. Go ahead and try it yourself. Play around with it. Super easy to get the hang, the hang of. Um, yeah, man, I've been using it. It works absolutely great. It takes a, just a very short time to get used to. And uh, that's it. So 
If you want to support, if you like this, look, best way to support, I never ask for donations or anything, but if you want to go and get self-ownership and you want to have more personal liberty and you want to understand the foundation of property and morality that comes from self-ownership, you can do that there. Also, check out the Vin Armani Show, of course, at VinArmani.com. Thank you guys so very much. Boom.